Hey, what's up everybody? This is JP or BNG if you're on Discord. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the hand poser tool that was recently released. And while this tool is included with the VR interaction framework, uh, it is a standalone tool. So you don't have to have VRIF to use it. You can just drop the hand poser folder right into your project and it will work just fine. So that means you can use it with something like Unity's XR interaction toolkit, for example. Uh, but it doesn't even need to be VR necessarily. You can use it for 2D games as well if you need to pose hands. Uh, and it doesn't even need to be hands. You can pose uh, humanoids, anything that's a transform uh, that has a position and rotation, you can use it. So in this video, we're going to go over how you would set up a new hand pose from a model from scratch, uh, how to save and load those hand poses, and then we're going to look at the auto pose feature, as well as how to use Oculus Quest hand tracking to create hand poses really quickly. All right, so let's get started. And first we're gonna open up the hand poser scene that is located in the root of the hand poser directory. All right, so we have our dark gloves model here. We have uh, the hand poser component as well as the auto poser component, but we're not really worried about this right now. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, and if we expand this transform definitions, we'll see that we have uh, you know, transform set up and defined for the thumb joints, index, middle, ring, pinky. Uh, we don't have any other joints currently listed, uh, but we do also have the wrist joint here. Uh, and that's pretty much all you need for the hand poser to work, uh, is just definitions of where all of these finger joints exist. And you can use as many as you want here. I have, there just happened to be four in this model. I think that's pretty standard for five. Yeah, there's five on the pinky. Um, the Oculus models use this. Uh, I believe some of the uh, other ones I've seen on the asset store use a similar naming convention. The steam hand should be similar. So you just want to make sure you have uh, index, you know, the name of the finger inside the transform. That's really it. It doesn't even have to be index one, two, or three. Uh, but generally you're going to have the transforms listed and parented to each other in this sort of format. Um, so this one's already been set up for us, and we can take a look at all the different hand poses by scrolling through all of these. So pretty nice and easy. I'll go through all of them. So how do we set one up from scratch? Well, I'm going to bring in a model. So we have, let's see, this nice fully gloved model. Let's add this in. I'm going to bring this into view. So there's no component on here. So let's go ahead and add this hand poser component. All right. So we have a warning that none of the bone transforms have been assigned. Most of the time, if your hand has been set up properly, if they are named with you know, an index, the names of the fingers and things like that, you can just click this auto assign button and everything has been assigned nice and tidy for us. Uh, everything looks good to me. So we have these other joints. This is just anything that doesn't have, you know, the name of a finger inside of it. And these don't really do anything, uh, or at least they're not necessary for posing. They might be just extra that are used for, you know, in-game purposes. So I'm just going to get rid of these because we don't, it's not going to hurt necessarily to have them, but it's good to just keep this to the bare minimum. You know, that way you're not storing information that you don't need. We really just care mostly about the positions and rotations of the actual finger joints. So I'm going to get rid of other joints. Uh, we're going to keep the wrist because the wrist would allow us to kind of pivot the hand around if we needed to, which can be you know a, a nice feature. So that's it. So we have our transform definitions defined. So we can try different poses. And I'm not in play mode or anything. I'm still in the edit mode. You can see all the poses are working nice. They look nice and smooth. And again, I'm not in play mode or anything. This is just regular. So these look good. So now we'll look at the auto pose feature. And to do auto pose, we'll just add the auto pose component. Expand this. So the way auto poser works is that you have an open pose and a closed pose. And you see these little spherical colliders that were added for us, or the representations of where the collisions will be looked for. So we're going to loop from a open hand pose to a closed hand pose. 
and for each finger, and whenever the finger curls down, if it makes contact with anything with this collider, then it will stop. Um, so we want to define the open hand, hand pose and a closed hand pose. So let's start with open hand pose. Now, I like to use a very wide open pose, and I'll show you what that pose looks like. So a regular pose, open pose might be like this. That might be your default open pose. But it doesn't quite give you enough range of motion if you were to put your hand like against something flat because you'd want these fingers to be straight. So a wide open pose is just going to be, you could even go wider than this, just the ex you know, extent of what your fingers could go backwards. So that's what we're going to use for our open pose is wide open. And then closed hand pose is going to be closed, obviously. And that just looks like this. So again, we're going to loop from, essentially, what's going to happen is when an item is being checked for, we're going to go from the open pose to closed. And anything in between that is going to you know, keep the fingers in position. So idle, we don't have to specify an idle pose. This is a pose that we can use if we want, uh, you know, if no contacts have been made, this is the pose to use. So instead of using a wide open pose, we could then use that default pose. For now, we're just going to keep that empty. All right, so we need something to collide with to test. So I'm going to enable this sphere. And you say, OK, well, now we want to try the auto pose feature. There's two ways of doing the auto pose. You can just click the button, and that'll do it once. You see we, how all of our colliders have they're now touching. This is on the ball, so they stop there. But now when I move my hand, it's still in place. So that's a helpful end editor if we want to click auto pose and then make different you know, rotation little adjustments here. Or you can click this update continuously button. And now as we move our hand in real time, this will update. And that can be nice if you're trying to position it around you know, a complex object and you're just trying to figure out where you want that to be. I'm just going to stick with a, a single pose for now. So now, if we want to make more adjustments, I find it helpful to use this skeleton visualizer, which is also part of this component. So we'll use that and keep show gizmos. And what this does is it gives us these nice little attachments, uh, these gizmos, these circles, these lines that show us where all of the joints are that we've defined. And it makes it easier to visualize, but it also gives us something to click on, which is really the main point. So see how we clicked on these little circles and they change color to show it's active. By default, if we don't have these, it can be diff difficult to, you know, you have to go through each transform, figure out which one to click on. Oh, I'm trying to find the index finger, but with these enabled, Oh, I can just click on these little circles. Very easy, very helpful. So use that. And when you don't need it, just uncheck it, and that will all be cleaned up for you. So now if we want to save this pose that we just created, all you have to do is click on the Save Pose button. And again, you can do this in the editor, or you can do it uh, during runtime as well if you're using, say, hand tracking or auto pose. You know, you're trying to move your object around, it, it doesn't matter. So to save this, we have a name. We can name it whatever we want. We'll call it you know, new pose one. We'll save that. And if, okay, so it automatically assigned our new pose. So this is where the poses are saved to, which is slash hand poser, slash poses, resources. Now, the reason it's saved in a resources directory is this allows us to use resources.load which is a Unity function that makes it really easy to load objects just by their name. Uh, so keep those in a resources directory of some sort. It doesn't have to be in this specific directory, but I do recommend having it in a resources. You know, it just needs that name in it somewhere. So let's take a look at that. That's under poses, resources, and our new pose is in new pose. There it is. New pose one. And this is a Unity scriptable object, so we can actually just drill down and look at all of these uh, rotations. And this isn't necessarily human readable, but it's you know just a nice way of seeing and verifying differences. 
All right, so that's the autoposer tool. All right, so next up, we're going to take a look at the Oculus Quest hand tracking features that we can use to make our own custom hand poses really quickly. Uh, to do that, we first need to make sure we have the Oculus integration installed. Um, this is required for anything hand tracking related. Uh, so once you have that installed, then we can open up the Quest hand tracking scene, which is also in the root of the hand poser directory. Uh, and this will allow us to really quickly get started. If you hit the play, play button, uh, we can just start creating poses right on the editor. And since I'm using VRIF, um, I have this little button set up, and this is included in this particular scene. So if I want to make a pose, I can just hit the button with my other hand, uh, you know, so I can quickly just boop, you know, boop. There we go. There we are. We have all these poses were saved, and if we wanted to, we could go back and load them, tweak them a little bit. You know, if you already know how many poses you need, uh, very quick. Very simple. I find that the hand tracking, you know, is at least for me, I don't know if it's my setup or what, can be a little wiggly. Just it's just how it kind of is with the quest. Um, but it's really nice to be able to make these hand poses so quickly. If you you know if you want to do something for a rifle, you can just keep saving these little poses and then come back and tweak them and resave them or create new poses. So you can rough them out and then come through and make little, little tweaks. But if you're also using a scene like this, you could put your, you know, your object in here and then, uh, and then do your actual posing. So if you're trying to pose it around something like that, uh, that can make it easy. So you have the auto poser and we have quest hand tracking. Um, and the way that the quest hand tracking works, um, you take the software. The way that the quest hand tracking works is that we have the R model, which contains the hand poser. That's our prevab that we looked at in previous scenes. And then there's this bone mapping script. And what this essentially does is just map bones from each finger. That's what these fingers are. From an index, from you know each bone, from the quest hand tracking over to our model and they're pretty similarly similarly laid out so it works pretty well but you might have to tweak it a little bit all right now that's it for this video i hope you found that to be helpful uh, if you did please make sure to like uh, there's probably a button down here somewhere i don't know uh, subscribe if you haven't already you should have it would be very helpful if you own vrf or the hand poser to get updates um, leave any comments below if you have any other videos that you'd like to see, or come hop on Discord and uh, you know leave some comments there. Join the community, see what's up, and uh, we'll see you there. Until next time, thanks and uh, bye.